Hello, my name is Vaughn Purdy. I'm your host of this week's Falcon Focus. Today we're going to be talking to some of the very interesting people behind the scenes. With me today is Maria Lewis. And Maria is our brand new uh, employee who's been at Simmons for a very short time. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Maria has this really, really, really com complicated title. She works in our library, but what is your correct title? I am the Access Services Manager. Now, what does that mean? That's a handful of yes. access services. So, right now I'm working the front desk, so okay. when people come in, they see me. <laughs> now, when you say the front desk, the front desk where? You're in a very In the library. Place. Yeah. In the library. And tell us about the changes that have been made at the library at Simmons College of Kentucky. Well, um, I've been there since uh, July. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been there for a short period of time, but just seeing people come in to use the facilities, um, check out books and use the computer lab, um, and just come ask questions about uh, research. Okay. You know. So you've been there since July, school started in the fall, mm -hmm. so how has attendance been at the library? Um, it's been up a little bit. Uh, students have been coming in because professors have been putting um, items on reserve, which means um, just one, they just need one, the one book that the library has and they can come in and check it out for two hours and then we put it back on the shelf. Okay. So if they, you know, if they need to make a copy of it, they are welcome to do that and then take it home as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well tell us a little bit about your background. Are you a Louisvillian? Uh, tell us about your education no. and how you came to center. So I am from a small town called Horse Cave, Kentucky. Horse Cave? Horse Cave, Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Yes. How many people are from? Who uh, live in Fourth Cave, Kentucky? I'm sure like 5,000 people or okay. something like that. Real small. We have two stoplights there. Oh. So that's fine. <laughs> so you grew up in Horse Cave? I Kentucky? grew up in Horse Cave, Kentucky. Okay. Um, I actually started out at Western Kentucky University, but I ended up transferring to Moorhead State where I got my associate's degree okay. in general studies. Um, I actually went back to WKU and ended up getting my degree in um, interdisciplinary studies with the emphasis of organization and communication. Okay. And while there, I worked in the WKU libraries. Okay, so you yeah. always wanted to work in libraries. What's so fascinating about working in libraries? Are you just a book nerd or you just like information? Well, it, it started when I was at Moorhead State and I needed a job, okay. so a work study. So I ended up working um, as a work study. Um, at Moorhead State University and then when I decided to go back to school I went to Western Kentucky again and I got another work study there okay but unfortunately uh, things changed and I was just looking for a job okay and then I ended up getting a job there working part-time at, yeah. at Western, Western Kentucky, Kentucky okay. University libraries yeah so how did we get you how did you find out about the Simmons role well I had just recently quit my job uh -huh. and so I was job searching okay. and I was asking friends if they know of anything, just let me know. Um, and my dear friend, Alex Mattingly, um, sent me a message and she said, hey, Simmons is hiring. You should look that up. I'm like, okay. So we and must so. give a big shout out to Alex Mattingly. I did not know that, but Alex, if you're watching us, thank you so much for bringing us Maria. She is a great, great find. Thank you very much. So tell us more. So after that, um, I went through the interviewing process. I was so nervous. Uh -huh. I was really nervous. But when I got the call, I cried. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. we didn't mean to make you cry, but we're yeah. very happy to have you. Yes, um, and this is new for me because I have never worked at an HBCU. Okay. I did not attend an HBCU, um, so I knew that it was going to be a little bit different. But also, I feel I, I feel like I was going to be at home. Oh, good. See. That is what HBCUs yes. do for you. Now, what had you heard about HBCUs? Did you even know about Simmons College of Kentucky? Well, I did not know much about Simmons College of Kentucky. I just, uh, just in passing, mm -hmm. um, just coming into town. Okay. And then also folks, you know, talk about like Simmons Bible College. Yes. People, <gasps> for shame, we're yes. no longer a Bible mm -hmm. College. It, as a matter of fact, if the president is watching this, he does, those are words he does not like to hear I associated know. with us. We are no longer that School. Exactly. We are a four-year institution with all kinds of degrees and majors. I want to clarify that. Yes. So we are a growing, thriving institution with four-year degrees. So yes. tell us more. So now that you're here, you're mm. at Simmons, you know that it's even it's more. It's more than that. Yes. It's more. Well, share with our audiences your uh, perspective of it and your uh, impression 
in your short amount amount of time, but tell us what you think. Well, first of all, y'all have a band program. Oh. We, have, we have a band program. Yes, we. Perfect. I, yes. So um, all throughout high school and two years in college, I was in the band. I played clarinet, bass clarinet. Oh. So it's been a joy to Wonderful. you know to you know get to know you know the band. Um, Are you still playing your instrument? It's been a while since I've played, but. Uh-oh, Dr. Davenport, are yes. you listening? Dr. Davenport, I, I told him that I play clarinet and bass clarinet. Okay. He told me that um, there's going to be concert band coming up soon. So I oh, may, that would be so nice. I may dip my foot in that if that's dip okay. Foot and he could probably get you, uh, brush you up on your skill. Yes, and I told him I, I still have all my books and stuff from high school at home at my mom's house. So Sounds no like you're going to be in the band soon. Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that is so wonderful. One thing about being at Simmons, we are small environment but we're a family mm -hmm. and you can step in where you fit in and even if you don't fit in there's always a place for people to do all kinds of volunteer work mm -hmm. uh the in not we're kind of a nurturing family environment so students will reach out i'm sure they're reaching out to you mm -hmm. uh, for some of those things so tell us how the students have been treating you everybody's been treating me so well I just remember one day a student called and he said, Miss Lewis. I'm like, oh my God, they know me already. So that made me feel good, 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 good. you know, and I just try to interact as best I can. You know, I'm not that much older than everybody. Right. You know, That's right. so, uh, and I, you know, I try to understand and listen to what their needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like when you work at an institution, when you work at a college, we are here for the students. Oh, that's so wonderful. We are yep. here for the students yep. and that's it. Like, that is, that's, that's that's why we are here to yep. help them. Wonderful. That's so. a shared goal we all have. Yes. Um, so, so how do you feel um, you want the library to be in the next two years and then again in the five years? I just want us to continue growing and have students to come in. If you have questions about any type of research, just let us know. Uh, we will put you in the right direction on what you need for your research needs. Um, just trying to get more people in, you know, come like, I know everything is mostly it, digital. Digital now, and I was going to yeah. ask you that question. With everything digital and they could just Google mm -hmm. and pick up everything in their phones or on their iPads or laptops, how are you getting students into the library and what's driving them there and what's keeping them there? Well, I feel some people, they do still like mm -hmm. the paper form. I know as for myself, when I look at the computer screen on my phone for a long time, my eyes start to cross a little mm -hmm. bit. So sometimes, you know, I would like to like print it out or mm -hmm. just, you know, have a hard copy. And then to take notes in the, you know, in the <laughs> book, you know, maybe not our books per se, but right. um, the physical, I just, I, we need the physical book. We do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think students are just different now. There's the e-books, they download everything. I have a teenage son. He likes books hard copies but all students don't they just mm -hmm. on the screen mm -hmm. it's a lot of screen time as you mentioned and I also feel like because textbooks and things are a little bit pricey mm -hmm. um, I remember myself paying like two or three hundred dollars for one book yeah, you true. know so if students can come in if we have that textbook or have that book that is needed for that class come on in so we can you know get that to you okay you know so tell us about some of the innovations you all are doing in the library I know there's also um, uh, a other people that we've hired to assist in the library. How is that going and what are some of the new things you all are bringing? Well hopefully in the future we can have a space to where we can do group work. Mm -hmm. So if say if a class is doing like a project like three in a, in a group they can come in and do what they need to do to get that project finished okay. or hopefully we'll have a space to where we have tutoring mm -hmm. you know so people can come in and get help with their classwork and hopefully a writing space oh yes that's a good idea yeah good idea good idea so what I want to know is what is your biggest challenge being in like because the whole it's almost like library, being in a library, library science is kind of a far gone mm -hmm. art, if you will, or an antiquated thinking. Uh, what would you say to, to, to those listeners about the importance of preserving books yes. and some of the things that we can treasure through our libraries? Yes, just come into the library. Hopefully we can get an archive mm -hmm. for Simmons College of Kentucky. Um, and explain to our audience what that means. 
what that would look like. So the history of Simmons College of Kentucky, we need that here on our campus. Exactly. Um, I know that other archives have things of Simmons. Yes. But we are here. We are in Louisville, Kentucky, the only HBCU. Mm -hmm. We need our history back on our campus. Exactly. Like now we do have a lot of photographs mm -hmm. in our heritage room that show our history. Um, there's been some talk about getting those preserved and getting plaques up, which would help to preserve and, and keep that history when all of us are gone. Exactly. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, so if we can sew like a way to get those preserved, like getting those in asset-free uh, mm -hmm. folders and um, paper and all that, and get them in a safe space. We do have a space in the okay. library that we can put those things. Okay. Um, that would be great. Okay. And I think right now, um, my director Seth Allen is has something online to where we can, you know, look at some items. But it would be great if we can have the physical item, so people can come in and look at this photo or look at a a, a yearbook or okay. you know, this one. I mean, because people in there. Simmons has this rich, deep history, mm -hmm. and as you say. Um, even going back to our early days mm -hmm. of the history, it needs to be preserved. Yes. So I think that's important. So tell us, we've got Black History coming up. Uh, what are your plans for Black History Month? Have you thought about how you can get students to engage more during that time period so they will learn more and more mm -hmm. about history? Well, it's still uh, plans. We're still planning to see what we can do to get the students in. Right now, we can probably do a, a display of books, okay. uh, what we have in there. Um, I'm still, I have a lot of things in my mind to where we can try to get the people, get the students to come in mm -hmm. and, and, you know, do something for uh, Black History Month. So we're, we're still planning. Okay, oh, good, good. We're good. still planning. So is it challenging to get books in? You all just continually just order different books? Is there a, a, a ranking of books that you all pay attention to, like the New York Times bestseller list and what is important on college campuses? I think right now the most important is is what's being talked about in classrooms. Okay. In classrooms. So it's driven by what the professor. What the professor wants. Okay. So um, there's actually a form online where professors can go and um, you know put what they're looking for okay. to add into the library. We've also had some professors just come in and ask, do we have this specific book? If we don't, I talk to my director about it to see if we can order it. Nine times out of ten, we'll go ahead and order it and get it on the shelf. Oh, wonderful. It sounds like we have a very um, welcoming mm -hmm. library staff between you and uh, Director Seth. So thank you so much for being my guest on the show. Thank you for having um, me. And I want you to remember to always reach out to us. And if anyone needs any information from Simmons College of Kentucky's archive or history, please reach out to Miss Maria Lewis thank you. and call her at Simmons College of Kentucky at 502-776-1443 and she will connect you. Thank you so much uh, for being my guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Join us next time on Falcon Focus. I'm your host, Vaughn Purdy, and have a blessed week. The music department at Simmons College now offers a gospel track for its music performance degree. Our Department of Music exists to develop musical knowledge and skill. Students become beneficiaries of program features and faculty that distinguish music as both an academic and artistic discipline. Program options include brass and wood, wood instruments, as well as guitar, bass, strings, piano, percussion, and voice. Your gifts will be encouraged and developed by a staff of experienced performing musicians and by the warm support of your peers. You will have frequent opportunities to perform, including vocal ensemble, gospel choir, jazz ensemble, marching band, and other ensembles, both on and off campus. Your music program can go no higher than those who lead it. Now is your time to build a strong music ministry from within. Help support passion already in your community. Help develop gifts already in your congregation. 
you might have the next James Cleveland in your church and don't know it. The heritage of artistic dignity found at historic black colleges and universities. The tradition of black excellence in gospel music. The calling to use your gift to turn hearts. Your journey toward obtaining a bachelor's degree in music starts now. Simmons College of Kentucky. Apply today. Become a part of the legacy. Welcome back to Falcon Focus. Uh, we've been talking to different faculty and staff at Simmons College of Kentucky. So with me today is Mr. Richard Brown, a former student at Simmons College of Kentucky, now employed at Simmons College of Kentucky as a, tell me your title again. I am the Student Success Outreach Coordinator. Okay, Student Success Outreach Coordinator. Mm -hmm. now, Richard, welcome to the show. Welcome, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you for being here. Tell us what your title entails, what it actually you do at Simmons. So uh, within what I do is I work in uh, student support services okay. and uh, we uh, help the students uh, with different type of uh, initiatives and support, whether it be academic, um, or personal. Okay. So we supply like uh, students need tutoring okay. or students may need a mentor or you know different things like that uh, that they may need uh, to have success uh, during the school year. Okay that's wonderful. I mean I think one of the things about HBCUs as you know um, we try to provide those kind of support services to keep our students engaged, to keep them here, yes. and to make sure they graduate successfully. successfully. So that title encompasses all of what you do. Yes. So tell us more about some of the new initiatives you have for 2021 and going into 2022. So some of the new initiatives we have, um, we just developed the STAR program. Okay. And that uh, stands for Students Taking Academic Responsibility. Okay. And that is kind of like a roadmap, uh, kind of a help for students. And it's a program to when students kind of fall below, yep. we want to try to catch these students early. Exactly. So they don't, you know, get too far behind. So we want to catch them early and kind of uh, give them that springboard to kind of push them forward uh, okay. so they can continue to have success. So how long has the program been in place and what are some of the results? Uh, the program has been, it's, it's fairly new. Okay. Uh, but we are definitely seeing tremendous results. Uh, students really... Uh, want to engage uh, with their education um, and uh, take it seriously and okay. really, you know, put forth the effort uh, to get their grades um, and to attend classes. <laughs> okay. I mean, it can be um, challenging for all college students, no matter oh, whether you're yes. HBCU, regular, just any college uh, to go to class because you're so independent. Mm -hmm. When you go off to college, you can do whatever you want to do or don't want to do and to the chagrin of your parents because that's not why parents send students oh. to college. If we've been to college, we all understand, we remember mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. But you have a choice. Yes. And yes. I'm so glad that you all are helping them there. Some some of the, uh, can you tell us some of the issues that you have had you have to deal with without giving these students names? Like uh, just, things that, uh, well, different issues that we, you know, we run into is, you know, we get a lot of uh, calls and different things. Uh, really just getting a hold of the students sometimes. Mm -hmm. That can be an issue sometimes. Uh, but once you do get a hold of them, it's a... It's a wonderful thing. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are some of the um, services we provide? So, some of the services we do provide: we have tutoring, mm -hmm. uh, we have mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, we have counseling services okay. uh, for the students. We also have um, and uh, working on uh, trying to work on work study. But I know that's through a different department as well. Yeah. Well, we um, we, so. we we we're coming back from COVID. Yes. Uh, if I'm not uh, correct me if I'm wrong, students are. Fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated. Back on campus, back in classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, are students having some uh, trepidation for being in the classes? Did they like being at home online or oh, did yes. they like being in class? So the funny thing is a lot of students didn't like the online thing. Uh -huh. They wanted to be on campus and it was kind of a shock to them when, you know, they had to stay home for mm -hmm. so long and then, you know, getting reacclimated. But a lot of them was excited to come back to campus uh, and get back involved, you know, because being on campus is really a... It's a different ball game rather than being at home behind a computer mm -hmm. trying to learn. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, we've been doing some uh, campus upgrades mm -hmm. and bringing some new services to the students to to keep the whole campus engagement. Uh, we just had uh, Miss Maria from the library mm -hmm. services on 
on the show and she talked about the services they provide to the students. We're upgrading um, facilities. We're doing a lot of things to hope to, to keep the students engaged in that warm and fuzzy mm -hmm. HBCU culture. So tell us a little bit about you. How did you come to Simmons? Uh, there's an interesting story. So why don't you tell our viewers? <laughs> so I uh, started out, uh, I'm not from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm actually from Illinois, but I've been here since 2000. Okay. I uh, graduated high school here, and then I went on to the University of Pikeville. Okay. Uh, where I played football. Ah. Uh, but after, you know, a couple of injuries, after a couple of years, and then, you know, not doing so, I actually flunked out and ended up back in Louisville. So do you think it was, it was, a, was it the distraction of college, or was it the distraction of football and college? Uh, it was. It had been both, mm -hmm. uh, but had you know, I look at everything as like a, uh, a divine plan. So, yeah. had I not gotten hurt, I wouldn't have been back in Louisville. Okay. Um, and then I was actually going to try to go to U of L, okay. walk on and continue football. But uh, I had a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, and she introduced Simmons to me. Okay. And I'm not going to lie. Growing up, I kind of in high school and stuff, I kind of rejected the whole HBCU mm -hmm. scene uh, because I didn't know much about it. Um, no, why, why did you reject it? I'm curious about that. Well, because growing up, you know, being an athlete uh -huh. and, you know, wanting to go to the highest level to play, mm -hmm. you know, HBCUs kind of get a bad rap. Mm -hmm. And also HBCUs don't recruit uh, as much as they should. That's because they probably don't have the resources <laughs> exactly. to recruit. It's a whole story about it the is, resources or sure. lack thereof. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but definitely, um, once I, you know, found out about Simmons, mm -hmm. um, I was just, I was, I was just, I was just amazed, you know, just, um, from start to finish, just being able to be here, uh -huh. it, it's been, it was it was a it was a wonderful journey okay. uh, to be able to, because I was able to regain my focus, uh -huh. and from going from a uh, you know C D funk out student to making the dean's list, uh -huh. being a 4.0 student mm -hmm. here I, at Simmons College, here, of Kentucky. Here, yeah, College of Kentucky, yes. sure. <laughs> uh, it was definitely life changing and really learning about the rich history oh. that HBCUs carry yeah. and even this school, mm -hmm. it, it really just blew my mind. Look and, at there, see? And there are 101 HBCUs I want our, our viewers to understand mm -hmm. all across this country that have rich history. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was one of the mo more eye-opening pieces of history you learned about Simmons? Really, um, for one, the, the biggest thing was that there was an HBCU in Louisville. See, yeah. That was the, mm -hmm. the biggest uh, breathtaker for me. And it was founded, you remember? Eight, Simmons was founded in 1879. 1879. 1879. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that people knew little about knew or little about. paid little attention to. How exactly, say? that's what I would say. I always call Simmons the gym, gym. that mm -hmm. needs to be shined. Yes, yes. Because the moment you... Step on campus, meet the people, meet the students, more yes. importantly. You realize that rich, deep history mm -hmm. that has been here since 1879. 1879. It, is, it is remarkable. It is. It is very, very remarkable. And when our president got Simmons uh, a part of the HBCU family in 2015, it was earth shattering. Mm -hmm. Because because we're a member of, HB, of the 101 HBCUs, it opens us up to a plethora of resources mm -hmm. of you know shared resources faculty and staff across other HBCUs uh, federal funding for our students with Pell grants oh, yeah. all sorts of things that people don't realize and the economic development that Simmons brings to Louisville oh, yes. is tremendous at least two to three million dollars every year mm -hmm. that we bring in and wow. if our students stay like you <laughs> then tell them tell them what you what made you stay and take the role once you graduated from Simmons? And you graduated when? And I graduated the year 2020. Mm -hmm. 2020. Uh, and I was the class valedictorian as well. <laughs> you were during the time with COVID. During the time, yes. We did not uh, have the traditional ceremony exactly. and everything we did was virtual. So that was... How was that? <laughs> That was that was different. Do uh, you feel like we owe you a do-over? No, I mean Sim Simmons has done enough for me. You know, just educating me. You know, giving me the confidence and help building my character. Uh, Simmons has done more than enough for me, oh, really. Wonderful uh, to say but, that. Uh, we didn't have the traditional ceremony, right. and uh, but it, but you still graduated. We still graduated, and they did a wonderful job on the ceremony. I, I watched mean, the ceremony. It was wonderful. They it was a little. 
different. It was different. It was a lot different. <laughs> Not a little different. It was totally different because we used to be in person, in person, marching like everybody else. Oh, yes. But it was still a wonderful, beautiful it was. ceremony. I can't remember how many people graduated. Probably about 20, was it 22? Somewhere in that range. 22 on screen mm -hmm. in the little boxes the little box. <laughs> <laughs> as they should graduate mm -hmm. and have the accolades. We might owe you a duo, <laughs> like an in-person duo. We have to think about that. We I'm not opposed to we it. We have to do that. We have to think about that. We have to think about that. Get a, get a duo, right? work. so to speak. So then what made you decide to actually come and work at Simmons College? Or something? You know, once I was a student of Simmons, mm -hmm. I literally became hooked. Oh, good. Simmons truly, and, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, Simmons truly is like you said a jewel and I truly do love this place and as I went on and I was actually getting ready to move to Ohio uh -huh. to take a head coaching job at a prep school for and basketball because I'm you know and you came and everything like I said as uh -huh. a divine plan uh -huh. that didn't work out so much because of COVID and I was able to come back to Louisville and trying to figure out what I was going to do uh, and then I, I was like because I always said I was coming back uh -huh. always said I was coming okay. back uh, and that was able to happen, and now I'm here at Simmons College of Kentucky, and and I'm here to stay okay. because, like I said, I, I love this school. With all oh, and it's so wonderful! <laughs> so how do you think you're motivating the students? They hear your story, they know your story. Mm -hmm. You going out and you're trying to bring more students to us. Are you also in recruitment as well as student success, or do you stay more in the motivating and coaching of students? Pretty much, I stay. I pretty much stay right there. But anytime I'm out, um, you know, because I coach AAU basketball as well. So anytime okay. I'm out. Um, anytime I'm in the public, uh, anytime I'm at churches, anywhere, I'm always promoting Simmons College of Kentucky because there's a lot of students, you know, it's, it's, people look at Simmons like a second chance school. Oh, yes. I but know. It, it's a second chance school, you can say that, but I mean, you get, oh my goodness, the, the, the education that you can gain here mm -hmm. and the love mm -hmm. and the development and the network and the connections you can make, oh. it's truly life changing. Did so. you hear that? I can just mm -hmm. mic drop now because <laughs> you told a story of all the work that we do behind mm -hmm. the scenes to try to make this place yes. get heard and to be out in the community to mm -hmm. get the community to understand what Simmons does for the entire not just our little space but for the entire city oh yes and we're getting more and more noticed yes. as you're seeing so tell me what you think what is part of your as, as we um, close as one of the most uh, where you want to see Simmons in the next five years Oh man, in the, <laughs> in the next five years, I, I really want to see Simmons thriving. You know, mm -hmm. students coming, enjoying the campus life, uh, a thriving sports program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the band's growing and growing, uh, multiple degrees. So, I mean, Simmons is definitely heading in the right direction. Okay. And I just truly can't wait to see uh, where we'll be at in the next, you know, five to ten years. Well, I know in the next five to ten years, you'll still be a part of yes, Simmons College yes, of Kentucky. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And ma you'll still be doing some great work. Mm -hmm. And I bet you'll get one of those big, complicated titles <laughs> that will <laughs> encompass all the great work that you're doing here oh, at Simmons. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I also wanted to mention that you are part of the Alumni Association. I am. I'm part of the Alumni Association. And we hope to grow that one as yes, well. Yes, yes. Okay. We do hope to grow that soon. Okay. So, Anyone is interested in learning more about Simmons College of Kentucky and the good work that Richard is doing, please reach out to us at 502-776-1443. Thank you so much for being on this week's edition of Falcon Focus.